do you escape the, the sort of hierarchical idea that, all right, if there's a computational uh, set of instructions that specifies a universe, a reality, this room, for instance, how, how do you get away from the, the, the hierarchical notion that, well, then this is an illusion, then, then somehow one is more real than the other. The instruction is the reality, the, the realization of the instruction, the video game is the illusion. How do you get away from that? Ed first and then Seth. Okay. Well, <clears throat> the, the more interesting aspect to that question is who's the programmer and where's the computer? <clears throat> that's the Catholic and, Church, and, for God's uh, sake. I mean, I mean that, that's going back, oh my God, that's Copernicus and yeah, Galileo. And, the an the, the answer is... The operating system is not Microsoft. So that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is... The computer is somewhere else, some place I call other, some other place. And the point is, if, we're, if all of this is some kind of informational process running in some machine, the machine is not in this universe. It's somewhere else, and this universe is a consequence of its running. And so uh, that's just a bizarre kind of fact, but it solves one very different difficult problem, the cosmogony problem, which is how did the universe get started? And I've never seen anything more harebrained than the ideas that came up with the Big Bang starting as some kind of quantum mechanical, uh, you know, just nothing turning into something. Well then... Okay, but the point, the point is, this doesn't have to be a mystery that goes on and on and on because the place where there's an interesting fact about computers. You can build a computer that could simulate this universe in another universe that had one dimension, or two, or three, or seven, or none. Okay, because computation is so general, it doesn't need three dimensions, it doesn't need our laws of physics, it doesn't need any of that. And so, so, the, so the anxiety within physics over, oh my God, there's a thousand particles, why aren't there just three, why isn't this more simple, it, it is a manifestation of the fact that, in fact, a, 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 a perhaps innumerable number of conditions are possible, it just depends on how you arrange the computation. Is that sort of what you're saying? No, what, I, what I'm saying is that the place, <laughs> the place that, if there is a computer running things, the place where the computer is doesn't have to have the same laws we have. I see. They don't need to have, be a kind of place that has beginnings and endings. See, our universe had a beginning. It has an end that we can foresee, okay? And it all doesn't make sense. You can't have something come from nothing and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, you can use your imagination. It turns out computing is so easy in some sense, it can exist in any kind of world you can imagine, totally different than our universe at all. So there could be some place I call other, and in other, someone is either doing an experiment, or something is doing an experiment, or an accident happened you know, a bug in the program, and that's this universe. 